So tonight we're going to be looking at Lenovo's new ThinkPad T14 Gen 3 Ryzen Edition. Now this is a laptop I've been really looking forward to, not only because I love ThinkPad 14 inch laptops, but also because the Gen 1 T14 Ryzen Edition was the laptop which started Mash IT. We reviewed that laptop just over two years ago and what an amazing review that was. And the good news is Lenovo have given this T14 a new chassis and makeover for 2022. So not only do we get updated components, but we've got a much nicer chassis, which we're gonna look at in a second. But can it make the best T14 to date? We're gonna check out the new design and features, test the performance of these new RDNA 2 graphics and Ryzen processors, and see how it actually stacks up in real world use. But first, a message from today's video sponsor, UPDF. UPDF is a universal, fast PDF editor that allows you to read, annotate, and edit your PDF files. UPDF is packed full of features such as encryption, converting PDFs with its built-in OCR, editing and annotating, which includes adding signatures, watermarks, as well as inserting links to websites and other pages within a PDF. You can modify and add images, as well as reading, sharing, and organizing your PDF collection. UPDF is available for all major platforms, such as Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. And the Mac version includes a native M1 version that runs alongside the older Intel version. Check out their website, which is packed full of helpful guides and tips to help get you started. And one license allows you to use the application across all of your devices. And what's more, UPDF is offering our viewers a 42% discount if you use the link below. Now back to the video. Right, so before we start looking around this laptop, I wanna quickly talk about specs. Now this T14 is available in Ryzen or in Intel. And there's also a T14S, which is a slightly more premium and more expensive version. And we will talk about that version later on in this video. So this Ryzen T14 version starts about 950 pounds in the UK, but I've spec'd mine out quite a bit and mine cost just over 1200 pounds. But for that, I got the eight core 6850U with RDNA graphics, 32 gigabyte of 6400 megahertz DDR5 high-speed RAM. We've got the Wi-Fi 6E and the WAN card. We've got the upgraded 400 nit screen with the Windows Hello IR reader and a 256 gigabyte SSD, making this come in at pretty good value for the 1200 pounds that I spent on it. Okay, so let's take a look around this laptop. Now it comes in two colors. I've got the Vili black here, and I believe there's also a, a dark gray, but it's not available in the UK. It starts at about 1.21 kilograms, uh, and obviously that can change depending on your configuration. Now as usual with the Lenovo ThinkPads, we've got the same soft touch finish they've been using for a few years. Feels fantastic, I really do love it, but it is a bit of a fingerprint magnet. So if that bothers you, maybe you should try the other color option if it's available in your region. The top is very plain. We've got the Lenovo logo on one corner and a ThinkPad logo in the other. And as usual, we've got a little red dot above the eye in the ThinkPad, and that does light up when it's either on or flashes when we're in sleep mode. So looking at the ports, and on the left side, we start with a RJ45 port for your Ethernet. We've got two USB-C ports with power delivery and uh, DisplayPort pass-through. We've got an HDMI 2, We've got a USB-A and a headset jack. So not a bad selection of port there for a 14 inch laptop, especially in this day and age. As I flip around to the other side, we've got the smart card reader if your business demands it. We've got the air exhaust grill. We've got another USB-A and a Kensington lock. And on the rear, you've just got the actual micro SIM card reader if you order it with a WAN. Now if you don't order it with the WAN card, sometimes they won't actually include this reader so don't think you can buy it without the WAN and add it in later on. Flipping it over to the bottom, and as you see there's a lot of venting here, so a lot of air intake, which is nice to see on some of these business class laptops, because sometimes they are a bit starved of air. But as you'll see in the performance section later on, they've done a really good job here. And on the bottom, like on the top, we've got this same soft touch feeling. It does feel luxurious when you're picking it up and using it, but it does really pick up your fingerprints. Okay, so bringing it back over, we're gonna open this laptop up. So opening the laptop, not very easy in one hand. You're gonna need two hands really to open it. Quite a stiff hinge, could be a good or a bad thing. Obviously, you're gonna need two hands to open it, but you don't get any wobble when you're typing on the laptop. Another great thing with these laptops, the screen can flip back 180 degrees. That can be particularly useful. I often find if I'm standing up, looking down and typing on a laptop when I'm on a customer's site or something, I like to be able to push my screen right the way back. So looking inside the laptop, we've got the same soft touch finish on the deck. Again, I do love the actual feel of this. You can see we've got obviously the Ryzen stickers, the ThinkPad here over on the right hand side. It's a typical ThinkPad look. But the difference is this year, 
is we've got a 16 by 10 screen, and that's something I do absolutely love. The older ThinkPad T14 was a 16 by nine, and that was the one thing that annoyed me, especially when comparing it to the X1 Carbon. Now the trackpad, it glides well, feels great for gliding and pressing down for your clicks. That works really well, but the one negative I've got with this trackpad does feel a little bit loose. It's only tiny, but it doesn't feel as premium as some other laptops that I've used. And I am nitpicking a little bit here, but I expect this to be a quite a premium laptop, being that it is one of their ThinkPad range. Also, being this traditional ThinkPad, we've got the track point up here and the buttons for it just above the trackpad. Now, anybody that's used ThinkPads for years are absolutely used to this track point. It can be incredibly handy. When you're typing, you can easily move the cursor with your track point without having to bring your hands away from your keyboard. And that's something I know a lot of ThinkPad users love. As usual, this works as expected. And if you are used to a track point, you'll be used to this. Moving up to the keyboard itself, it's your standard affair of a ThinkPad keyboard, slightly sort of concave for keys. It feels great to type on. Now, as with most of the other ThinkPad range of this year, they have reduced the travel a little bit. So if you're used to that deep travel from some of the older ThinkPads, you may be a bit disappointed. But having typed on a lot of keyboards this year, I still think this is one of the better keyboards to type on day in, day out. And I absolutely love typing up documents on this machine. I also love the layout of this as well. I know it's got some smaller cursor keys, but at least you've got full-size up and down cursors, unlike a lot of other laptops. Now, with regards to the keyboard itself, you can order it with or without backlighting. I'm not that bothered about the backlighting on these laptops or the way I use them, so I didn't even bother. I think it's only an extra 10 pounds or dollars difference to add that in, but I'm really not bothered. But you can have it with just a white backlight if you prefer. Now, above the actual keyboard, we've got the speaker grill. They sound like this. Speaker test on the ThinkPad T14 Gen 3 at 80% of the speaker volume. Certainly better than previous T14s that came before this model but uh, certainly not an amazing uh, speaker experience. Pretty good for podcast and very you know, infrequent listening. You're going to want a pair of speakers or headphones with this one. And then moving up to the actual screen itself, as I mentioned, I've got the 400 nit 1200p version of this screen. In my opinion, it's one of the best upgrades you can get for this laptop. The base screen is 1200p still, but only 300 nits, and the color gamut is quite low. So if you're buying this laptop, I'll do yourself a favor and get at least the 400 nit 1200p screen. They do also do a 500 nit version, but it's quite an expensive upgrade. And there's also a 4K plus version, and again, an even more expensive upgrade. For me, I prefer the 1200p 400 nit because it's low powered, so it helps with that battery life. And it still looks great with the colors and even the sort of the pixel density on a 14 inch screen. And above the screen, we've got the 1080p webcam, and it looks like this. And this is a test of the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 3 1080p webcam. But be careful when you're ordering this model because you can also get it with a 720p webcam. I would definitely recommend you get the 1080p version with the IR Windows Hello. That is a great feature, being able to open the laptop and log straight in with that Windows Hello. And lastly, we've got a little Think shutter just above the top. And as you sort of slide it across, you'll notice it goes red. That shows you that your actual webcam has been shut off if you're worried about privacy. Quick flick across to the right. And it's back on again. And lastly, if you don't want to use the Windows Hello facial recognition, you can also configure this with a fingerprint reader as well. Personally, Windows IR is my favorite, so that's all I've used. Now getting inside of the laptop itself is relatively straightforward, just a few screws on the bottom to remove the base plate. But unfortunately, with like most modern laptops, there's not really a lot you can do inside of this machine. Firstly, the RAM is soldered, and we've only got one SSD slot. As I say, I've only got mine populated with a 256 gig SSD. I may upgrade it in the future. And also we can see the battery here. I've got the upgraded 52.5 watt battery. You can also get it with a 39.3 watt battery, which will make the laptop lighter, but will lose you a fair bit of battery life. Okay, so let's look at performance then on this laptop. So as I mentioned earlier on in the specification section, I've actually got the Ryzen 7 6850U eight core ULV CPU. Now, in my opinion, these Ryzen 7 ULV CPUs are by far the best CPUs you can put in these slimmer light laptops. Now the Intel 12th generation CPUs may have slightly faster single core scores, but when we look at the Cinebench and the Geekbench, the actual multi-core scores on this 6850U destroy all other ULV CPUs before it. 
So this CPU translates really well to heavy use. So it won't be quite as snappy as the 12th gen when you're opening up those apps and other bits and pieces because of that slower single core score. But anything that's utilizing multi cores, this is absolutely gonna dominate the 12th gen Intels. And the great thing about these CPUs, because they're so efficient, it doesn't get overly hot and therefore doesn't start throttling back like a lot of the Intel CPUs do. And another great aspect of these Ryzen CPUs is the fact that we get RDNA 2 graphics this year. And that is an absolutely astounding bump in graphics compared to last year's Vega graphics and against any of Intel's RS graphics that they've currently got out on the market. When we look at the Geekbench 5 OpenCL score, you can see we've got over 30,000 on this actual GPU, which is more than double the best Intel XC ULV CPU we've tested so far. And that translates really well into games, benchmarks, and any 3D application, such as Blender or Photoshop, or maybe even a bit of light video editing. So that means that this work laptop can cut through all of your demanding office tasks, a bit of light 3D work, and then you can even kick back with a bit of light gaming at the end of the day, and it will play so incredibly well on this laptop. And the best thing is, it doesn't even get hot or loud. Now we tested a bit of Dota 2 on this machine, at its maximum performance mode, and not only did it play incredibly well at the 1200p with high graphic settings, which is incredible for integrated graphics, but it does it incredibly quietly, and this is on the performance mode, there is no throttling, and it will play heavily for hours on end, which is something I've been waiting for for ages from a business class notebook. Now in the performance mode, the CPU can maintain over 25 watts, which is really incredible, and the power modes on this laptop are actually controlled by the Windows Power Plan, and if you change it to balance mode, you're just under 25 watts. And if you put it on the silent mode, you're about 17 watts. So overall, you've got a great range of options to choose from to configure this laptop. And each of these modes will have an effect on the performance and also the actual sound of the laptop. So overall, with performance, I've been incredibly impressed with this little integrated GPU. So that takes me neatly through to the battery life. Now, one thing I've always been impressed with with Ryzen's is their actual battery life compared to Intel. And that's absolutely no exception here. In our usual battery test, streaming YouTube over Wi-Fi at 200 nits of brightness, we got just over 12 and a half hours of battery life before this laptop conked out. That is absolutely incredible and much better than any of the other 12th generation Intel laptops we've tested. Now, as always with Ryzen, to get that battery life, they do throttle back the CPU a little bit when you're on battery. And I found if I put this into best performance on battery, I lost just over 10% of that performance compared to being on mains. But in my honest use, in day-to-day -day use, I didn't really notice it, and it did feel just as good as if you are on mains. So obviously this laptop is charged over USB-C. It comes with a 65 watt USB-C charger, which is reasonably compact. Here it is here. And if you don't like the provided 65 watt, the joy of being USB-C is you can pretty much charge it with anything and it will get you by. Now, I've used it with power banks, and monitors and other power adapters, and it's performed absolutely flawlessly. So it's not picky with any of the other adapters I've tested, but I wouldn't want to try it with anything less than about 45 watts. So onto the conclusion, and I have to say, I have been incredibly impressed with this laptop. Its performance is amazing. The form factor is fantastic. The battery life is great. And I love the fact it doesn't get hot or loud, which is something that happens with so many Intel laptops. Now I did mention I'll talk about the T14S version and I think I'd like to do that here because this is obviously the cheaper model. The T14S is slightly more expensive and there is a couple of ways to differentiate them. The T14 being cheaper also gets an RJ45 port. The T14S does not, but the T14S gets USB 4 ports. Now that could be a game changer if you wanna use an eGPU or any high speed storage. So if that's something you wish to do, you may want to discount the T14 and get the T14S. It is a bit more expensive, but it could be worth it to you. And the T14 is ever so slightly thicker and is given a higher wattage budget for the CPU on here. Now for me, because I'm not planning on plugging this into an eGPU and I want the most power I could get out of this Ryzen chip, I wanted this T14. The T14S is only a couple of watts different, but that can make all the difference if you want to do some gaming on the side, a bit more Photoshop or quite heavy blender work. I certainly want that extra wattage on that CPU. And the other question you've got to ask yourself is do you get the Ryzen version or do you get the Intel version of this model? Now, I would say from all of my testing of 12th generation Intel CPUs, unless you need that Thunderbolt or you really love that snappy single core performance that you get with the Intel, I would get the Ryzen every time. It's a much better all round package with better battery life, better multi threaded performance, cooler temperatures, 
and much, much better 3D performance. So in my opinion, this is the model to go for. And I absolutely love this machine. So that's my thoughts on the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 3. Love this machine, but as always, I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think there's a better model for the business class than this machine? Put your comments down below and I will get back to you. And as always, thank you for watching.